first glance is a nice, tight butt and beautiful bendy legs. Yeah, the sex appeal is gone. We now have um, men being treated as sexual objects. I mean, you have Marky Mark, rap star in New York in his underwear, you know, 20 stories high. I mean, here is a man who has been turned into a sex object. Oh, come on. <laughs> you mean that? My wildest sexual. Well, you're going too far. Whoa, Paul, my <laughs> man. <laughs> Why do you think Paul is going too far? See, I know him very well. And unfortunately, I don't find him sexy at all. What is a sex symbol? Someone that looks sexy? Well, I don't know. Leaders. Well, you know, I think some leaders have sexual power, but my opinion of, of what a leader should offer somebody is, 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 is inspiration and everything else. We're in the stage of politics in South Africa where politicians are actually what they are and what they say. Jay Naidu. No. No. Sexual fantasy. <laughs> Vernon. Yeah. Is this, uh, you want to contribute to sex in the 90s? Okay, hold on. Okay, ready? Ready? <laughs> ready? Let's go for it. Hitchmatas. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> And, uh, once again, we're talking about the sex appeal tonight. Our very special guest, Paul Pume, former Mr. South Africa. Good evening. Hi, what's your name? Soccer players, rugby players, players. politicians. Do you think Madiba is sexy? <laughs> oh my God, he's like a million years old. <laughs> Male sex appeal is that look in the eye. It's the unspoken attitude and aura that surrounds a person. It's, a, it's that mystery that draw someone to you. Sex appeal is factor X. You know, if we all knew what it was and how to have it, then there would actually be no magical pairings. It has to do with living with some kind of an animal instinct, which sort of like comes alive. Okay. Strong sex appeal is about defying, about doing whatever it is. Breaking down structures, breaking the laws, being exactly who you want to be, and feeling quite comfortable. With both feet on the ground, he's got the blessings of the God. I want to be attractive, sexually attractive. What do I do? Help me. I don't know that. A man can answer the question of the formula for sexual attractiveness uh, to women and say, you know, here are the ingredients, this is the recipe. If someone approached me to ask me for advice on how to attract my sexual partners, well, I don't know. I mean, I would kind of tend to say, well, go to very dark clubs. It's quite a deep thing, you know. Um, I think you have to, if you want to make a man sexy, if you know, if you're working with a young guy, just give him the tips. You know, tell him concentrate more, concentrate more on what you are as a man. But I find what's appealing for women nowadays is women are more liberal, so they they want you to be yourself. You know what I mean? You know, you gotta be yourself and just come out and say, "What's up, baby?" A man who knows what he wants. That's very sexy. I don't want the kind of man who like, I get to tell what to do. Let's go that way and then they run. Let's go that way and they run. I hate that. There might be a perception of the women that the men are, are getting softer and not as strong as they should be. But I believe that the, that the man is still the, the boss and he's still the, the supporter and the provider. God created, created us in, in his image. And therefore, we just have to keep the image. Be what God made you be. Sex appeal is you. It's you. The greatest turn on for me and I'm sure for, for, for many women, uh, is that you, you meet somebody with a great heart who's absolutely natural. There's no side, no sort of, gosh, suddenly clicking into a different personality or something. Look at me as Henry. If you think I'm good, great. If you think I'm not good, it's your indaba. One thing I've learned, great advantage, I think just turned 40, I might add, is I actually don't care as much as I did when I was 30 what other people thought 
And if women don't like the package, well, then there are no doubt other buses that can stop at the bus stop. I've always maintained that it's either it happens or it doesn't happen. It's not something that you create so that you draw attention on. But uh, my wife does tell me sometimes that, you know, when you play, you know, I, I enjoy watching, just watching what you play. Men, men are funny. They walk into a place and they see a book, okay? And then now they are such hunters, you know, food. They walk in and they start looking at the door and, and, and about an hour, two hours later, they're standing with them and they can see and they think, oh, got this girl. In the meantime, she got them. She, when you walked in, she saw you. She, she knew that she, want, she wanted to be with you. And you did all the work and she made it that she just didn't have a clue. And, and she basically, I think, I think a woman is a hunter and a man is not a hunter. Tall, dark and handsome. Yeah. And blue eyes. A smile. Um, his arms are like nice arms. He's got to be strong, but not too strong. Nice bumps. <laughs> yeah, cute. But he's physical, believe me. Especially when they take their pants off. <laughs> his chest. Must have nice hair. Must be romantic. And he's got to have a strong personality. <laughs> Sex into the top in my eyes because that's where everything happens. Eye contact. No, I think I think it's just being yourself, man. If, if they if they if they like you and they think you've got sex appeal, then you know, then you've got it. And if you don't, then you don't. It's very, it's very difficult to uh, to 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 uh, to project sex appeal if you're not feeling sexy. It's, it's an abstract noun. It's something you feel. It's something you possess. It's a characteristic. <laughs> For me, for me, there is so much sexual about men. A man can be sexy in, in shyness. He can be sexy in a gesture that, that is totally out of the blue, that is not... I couldn't really say a specific thing turns me on. It can be anything. The physical side of the, any human being is very important. The sex appeal comes from it within as well. You know? It's yeah, not that's just that's a physical that's thing. That's mm -hmm. A lot of the time, women always go... Someone says, well, what's the, what do you like in a guy the most? And she'll go, his personality. Okay, it does mean you are attracted to a person's looks, but hey, a guy can be so sexy from within as well. I think it comes in a package. You can't sort of take away the physical appeal from that particular person. Therefore, I say it comes in a package. It's an overall look. I, a man, a totally irresistible man, I suppose, for me, would be someone who has a great bod, not one of those the bodybuilders, but sort of a nice defined body with a good character, strong character, um, humorous, um, just... Uh, <laughs> um, when I met him, he was in long shorts, rollerblades, a cap, big diesel glasses, t-shirt, and a big feather tattoo. He sounds rugged and a but he's actually a corporate guy. He's very corporate, he's very well dressed, very well spoken, clean cut. When I met him, he was rugged, he was, <coughs> it was hot, it was, he was skating, it was just a physical attraction. And then <coughs> he was just very lucky, he had everything to go with him. For example, you look at Brett's outfit over here, okay? Nice, uh, very subtle check pants, frontier pocket, you know, you don't, wear, you don't necessarily have to wear it with a belt. Okay, preferably not because it needs to hang low on the hips. Do you feel sexy in it? Do I feel sexy? Yeah. Yeah, it's a cute outfit. It is, it's not very appealing to see a, a very um, a large man, for example. You know, a man with a, with a belly wearing a tight pair of jeans, you know. To say what women find appealing, they can find anything appealing. It's just the way it's packaged. 
I really think so. You see, you see a guy wearing an Armani T-shirt, a Dolce and Cabana jeans, uh, Jojo, uh, a James Versace jacket. Like he's just a whole big ball of labels. Um, yeah, no trace sauce at all. Holy fuck. Gee, he could have holy pants. Uh, it's once inside. Once inside. <laughs> Oh, I think my husband is the safest man in the world. <laughs> I love, I love men with beautiful legs. I like a man who who goes to gym and looks after his body, watches what he eats. And um, the first time I saw him, I said to my friend, I think that's my man. That's the man I'm gonna marry. I'm gonna try everything to get him. What did you see to actually define one, two, three? Yes. Oh, he he looked sweet. Uh, and uh, you know, I like a man who can dress up. You know, he, he was stunning that night. What was he wearing? <laughs> you uh, I, 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 can't <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. But no, he was in jeans. He was wearing jeans. He was in jeans. And you could see, you know, his body nicely, that he's a man. What is, is this sex appeal? That is general sex appeal as far as 80% of people are concerned. Exactly. Good body, yeah. dark and handsome. Turn around, Martha. Turn around, boy. I think you're sexy. I know you're sexy, but do you know that? Um, I believe you. Never answer. Very good. Hey, guys, we know you're late today, man. <laughs> you don't have to get diplomatic. <laughs> okay, well, um, he knows his queen. Oh. <laughs> oh. And I think if a woman saw that. Basically, they, the first thing they wouldn't look, I don't think they'd look at his face first. I think they'd see a big body and then work upwards or work downwards. Now, look at Michael. He's got this rough and rugged face with a very rough mm. skin. I wouldn't say actually rugged face. I'd say, I'd say a defined face. He has a more Come defined on. face. Can I ask you a question? Do you feel sexy? Um, when, when I've got something to show, then I feel it, yes. Like now? No. I feel, I feel strong. You don't tell people that you're a sexually attractive person. You let other people to tell you that you're sexually attractive. I, I make sure, I make sure, Peter, that I am a sexually attractive person. When I walk out of my house, the way I dress, the way I talk, the way I look, I make sure that I must be attractive. So when I walk there, I expect people to find me attractive. So why don't you say it? Because now you know it. If I have to say it now that I'm sexually attractive, I feel very much sexually attractive. I feel very much attractive as an attractive person. There's something else. It's not sexy for a man to speak about sex appeal. It's not sexy for a man to, to be aware of sex appeal, um, his own sex appeal. Although I do think uh, that they are very much aware of it, really. and. Uh, they do think about it. No, no. <laughs> Am I a sexy man? No. No, I think I would, I, I think I would just say I'm a man. <laughs> I think I'm sexy. I mean, look at me. <laughs> I, 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 I just sort of think, well, sexy, is that the kind of adjective I would apply to myself at this age? <laughs> what a question. Yeah, women, women definitely, they can indulge in their sexuality, but men can't show that they do that. Women show it because they know guys would never be, will let, I'm not very intuitive, but I feel it. They will see it. A, a woman is sexy when she knows she's sexy. A, a, a man, they say, is, is, should not know. So he should seem like he doesn't know. Why do you show it? You know, but when a woman walks, ah, hey, you know. Yeah, you know, uh, you know as, as I was telling you, you know. <laughs> You know, uh, come on, man, no, man, no, man, you're talking boo, man. Look, <laughs> not a Bruce Biggin. Do you think uh, Hendrik has sex appeal? Well, I'm, you know, if I say yes, then I'm in trouble because then I might think I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're his friend, so. No, looking, looking at his personality, I think he's gay. Because it's great that men are talking about male sexuality. Because yeah. it's something that, that girls discover in themselves all the time. And, and talk about all the time. And, and it's a subject that, that guys wouldn't, guys around the table won't talk about it. I mean, can you imagine your best buddy saying, David, you think I'm sexy? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, oh, 
So it's, it's a touchy subject between men. The issue of why men find it so difficult to, to, to see themselves as sexual objects is because, historically, it has been the woman who has been in the role of sexual object. It's women whose role it is to be attractive, to serve men in this particular way. And that, I that is a history of many thousands of years, that women have been placed in that position of being the sexual object. Men find it uncomfortable to be placed in a similar position and to have to consider themselves as a sexual object. Because if you say to a man, are you sexy? You are asking him to see himself as a sexual object. You're asking him to see himself as something which is desired, as something which is somehow in a way passive, which is, which is feminine in a way. You've got a lot of ladies out there that would like to see them take it all off. But because we are a very, very professional kind of show, we, we would not go down to, you know, anything further than just their G-string. It's a kind of a warm feeling that you get. It's definitely a mutual thing. Um, yeah, it's a tingling in the toes. Your hair starts to stand a little bit on end, and then you just go straight in. Eh? The whole show is all about a mind game. Everything's sitting up here. They're creating, every single female in the house is probably creating their own image and their own fantasy as, as to how they would approach us and, and things would develop. So, first of all, it's all about a mind game. And then it becomes physical. Uh, we have a lot of what we call groupies, as it were, that would, I would imagine, give their eye teeth to be seen or to hang around with the guys or to actually go out with them. They do want, they do want the buttons to be touched. The, the thing is, you just got to go find them. Experiences. Do we have time, Paul? <laughs> I've got manuals, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now look, we've been, we've been offered all sorts of things from, from uh, how can you say, um, orgies or, or money or, or just to be spoiled for the night and things like that. Drinks on the house all the time. You know, did? <clears throat> I started Playgirl in South Africa because um, there was an evolution, sexual evolution taking place in South Africa. And women were not a part of that evolution at all. Magazines were flooding in, for magazines for, for men. There was absolutely no one catering for women in this country, and that's why I did it. Um, it wasn't because I, at the time, loved naked men and wanted to exploit their bodies or anything like that. Um, once I started getting involved in Playgirl, my attitude changed very, very much. How did your attitude change? Well, I actually realized that men have incredible bodies. And they should be, not exploited, but they should be commercialized, just like a woman's body. There's nothing more beautiful than a, a sculpted man's body naked. <laughs> men, men work too hard at trying to be attractive physically. The, the body, the body that is great communicates. It comes with a voice as well. You know, it's like a hello, my baby. Well, I'm so and so, and uh, oh, you're beautiful. You have to have like a very deep voice, you know, like. Oh. I find that very sexy. Okay, visually, hey, you, have, you, you really have to have nice lips. <laughs> you really have to have good lips and everything. I find that very sexy. I don't believe you're asking me this. <laughs> <laughs> nice, juicy looking lips that almost look like um, two pieces of an orange, a very juicy orange, you know. Uh, you have to be slightly on the thick side. And, uh, yeah, that, 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 ooh, yeah. If you look at any commercials, if they advertise a, a chocolate bar, I mean, they normally choose a girl with very sensuous lips. Beautiful lips. And obviously Beautiful she's going to really put that chocolate into her mouth to the best of her ability. And, I mean, she was chosen because she's got sensual lips and she's advertising a chocolate and it goes down well. 
I've heard some weird things said about you. <laughs> they recognize something, which, you know, like, wow, this works. You know, you know, I mean, he's bomb. <laughs> he's very good. <laughs> What's a hot bomb? No, a hot bomb is, no, not like tight, tight you know. When you, when you touch him, you feel like you're touching a rock. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't feel like uh, jelly pudding. I don't like that. <laughs> jelly pudding. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, know, you, you know, you know, black guys will walk around holding their crushes once in a while. These street wise guys. Yeah, but I find I, I mean, coming from overseas, I find that the South African men do sort of walk and talk with their associates, talk with the girls, and lift their crush up as if it's something that is like an everyday thing. Basically, they take that as an everyday thing. But funny enough, in the West Indies, we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We actually stand there talking to a girl and sort of keep leaning and, and grabbing our crush and lifting our crush while we're talking. So I think it might be either a black thing or it might be just a norm thing as we see it in our eyes. Then, now, okay, yeah, no. It's, it's actually off-putting if, if it is not done if it's done like every two minutes, you know, you stand with a guy on a date, you know, and he feels very unsure of what he has done, that is possible. And I mean, I can understand that it's probably something uncomfortable and have to move it, but, you know, if we did that, you know, it wouldn't be particularly nice. I hate that in men. Well, what about the uh, size of the dick now? Does oh. it play an important role? <laughs> is this on TV? No, why would it? Babe, take the size of a penis, what do you say? Oh, poor, you bad boy. Unfortunately, it does, I'm afraid. That was, of all the letters we got, it was, it pretty much all of them came down to the one thing, and that was uncircumcised, circumcised, size, angles. I mean, they, that is very important. But the thing is, it doesn't help if a man has got a big dick, then he can't use it, mm. you know? And I think, again, it is the love you, you, you got for someone, the love you shared. If, if it's small, then you can use it, then, you know? That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Rather a big one than a small one, is what I'm saying. Um, I think girls like, if the feeling is good, okay. you gotta have rhythm. It could be small, but you gotta, you gotta know how to entertain. A Zulu, whatever, warrior thing, we call it, mandingo. But if you don't know how to use it, it won't work. She'll be out of the door. She'll say goodbye. Ah. <laughs> Tattoos. Where? I wonder. The eyes, are both the eyes absolutely. The eyes, eyes are both. Man. The way he talks are good. <laughs> eyes can talk. Vicious. Eyes can talk. Oh, eyes can talk beauty. Eyes can talk sadness. Eyes speak for you without you opening your mouth. But you flaunt that. You know, yeah, you flaunt it. You're like, look nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that that is vanity, definitely. For me, I like big hands. What do they tell you? They tell you everything about their character. They do. I don't know what it is, but but man's hands just say so much about that man. I don't know. I can't explain what it is. Nice clean yeah. nails. A lot of girls are hot hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of girls like big hands and what, big feet. What kind of hands? <laughs> They hate men with small hands. But the thing about penis size and finger size is it's not true. Height is comforting, right? Height is comforting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Woman yeah. likes a good yeah. tall yeah. man. You feel secure. Yeah. If someone's slightly bigger than you. Yeah. You don't want to hurt someone who's smaller than you. Mm. Yeah. You want to be secure. You want to be held. You yeah. want to be. You want to feel comfortable, protected. Yeah. Yeah. That's what your man is. He's uh, protecting you. Uh, That's what's sexy about. Yeah. He's there. He's like, hey, don't look at my lady. For me, I'd like to escape into somebody's body, uh, and and that what. That's when I feel whole. Um, so height is very important. When you're looking at, the, at somebody sweating, you can imagine yourself <laughs> having that somebody around you, maybe in bed and sweating. You know, that can, that can drive you into some kind of, uh, of uh, fantasies. I think I should buy this and sleep in it every day. Because it, yeah. it feels oh, very man, comfortable. Nice. Yeah. Well, definitely I know that I am a sexy man. And how do I know that? I prove to myself that uh, really, so far that I'm 31 now of age, and so far that I am still existing, I had a case of beautiful man.
sex appeal, when we look at it and when we try to analyze it, it is, yes, it's biological, but at the end of the day, it's still not very that biological because it is what the public really wants it to be. See, people, people say I'm a sex symbol. I don't think I am a sex symbol. I didn't make myself a sex symbol. You know, people are deciding that you are a sex symbol. I think that it's, um, it's important to realize that the minute you start worrying about images and public um, perceptions, you're taking your eye off the ball and you're losing sight of, of your own goals and, and where you want to go. It's part of an industry. Sex appeal, I don't think, exists in a vacuum that one can define it and say, there it is, sexual, sex appeal is there, that's the recipe in any culture, any time, any place. It doesn't work like that. Sex appeal is magicked into being by, by film directors and, and, and clever people who know how to manipulate our tastes and our opinions. Basically, at the end of the day, the client has paid me to look good in their garments, to sell the garments. So I would model every single garment as an individual because everybody has an individual taste. Clive is dressed very upmarket, right? He's off to work. He has a beautiful, beautiful Italian linen shirt on, a lovely silk tie. But I, there's a certain walk I would, a certain way I would walk, or there's a certain look I would portray for each garment. And if I see a certain client or whoever, looking at that specific garment I'm wearing, I might give a little eye contact or give a little head turn or whatever, just to make the garment even look better. Yeah, from a marketing point of view, it certainly helps the game. Um, certainly good to have, uh, if you want to call it sex symbols or if you want to call it um, heroes. He's the cricketer, huh? <laughs> you don't want to be popular, you want to be effective, so. I do enjoy watching rugby. I do that because when they're in a scrum and their shorts sort of get pulled right up, you see a bit of a buttock there. And that I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's a question. Can you use food? Food? Yeah. Food? Oh, Erotic yeah. food. Food can be sensual, yeah. Mm. yeah. The way you eat it. The way you eat it, of course. The way you eat it, you know. How? How could you eat this food to be sexy? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot can be done with food by two people. It has to be by two people. Definitely, you know, there's a lot, in fact, but yes. Juicy fruit. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> Lots of food, in fact. Okay, I love these. I know, I know, I know, I know. God, I love these. The whole hard hope bought some cooked as a pad, but, you know, it uh, doesn't really turn me on. I, I've never been into the big rugby thing. Uh, Oh, it's open. Look at that, it's just open to me. Now, I don't know this, I've never had this. And all that's important is that, uh, you see, I'm scared there's sand in there because I haven't picked it before. But this one seems very ready. Oi, look at that. And boy, seafood is so feminine and so sexy. This one's actually quite rich. For me, one of the most essential things about um, cooking for a wonderful woman is to make her put things in her mouth she's never had before. You never had one before? No. Mm. So it's fantastic. It's mm. salty. Mm. Huh? Mm. Okay. Mm. And it's not even no ammonia. Mm. It's fantastic. I love seafood. I love seafood is just like so, so sexy. Cooking can be fun. Only if you know it's it's shared between men and women. It's we, we, we should get rid of the perception that cooking is for women. We can we can cook well. And that as well can have a sexual appeal. That doesn't make any sense to me, I'm sorry. I actually look at that one. I think you've got a, a piece of mango there on your wings. I think all, all men should get in touch with their feminine side and all women should get in touch with their masculine side and everybody should get in touch with 
you know, their feline side. And then, you know, everybody should get in touch with whatever they want to get in touch with. But I mean, you only have to do that if there's already an inner boundary between what you are. You only, men only have to get in touch with their female side if it's been something that has been walled off. No, I don't know. I don't know what the, what, 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 what's right and what's wrong. I just feel that in this day and age, men should be more in touch with what has now become formally known to me as the feminine side. Get in touch with your male side. I mean, I think that if men want to want to curtail their own freedom and decide to act in only a butch way, well then fine. You know, I mean, it's like amputating a limb. At the risk of, of, of sounding a bit arrogant, I consider myself to be a total man. You know, I, I, I revel in my manhood. I, I like waking up in the morning and if there's an ache in my shoulder, I like the way it feels. No, I think androgynous uh, is, um, is a very cruel thing to do. I, li I like being a man. I love being a man. It's just conditioning. And if once you throw away or work through that stuff, like mm. filter it, you will start seeing that you don't have to be just male or you don't have to be just female. And so that androgyny is actually a state of net neutral. It's a neutral state in which you can move. It doesn't matter which way you go. I think the man and the woman are just the same. It's only that God made them different. Don't panic. Sweetheart, come and have a look what I'm doing to you, okay? I've actually got too much in here. Okay. Just stand back a bit. You see, cooking is really quite a butch thing to do. And this just burns. These are all live. They really are live, live, live fish. You can see when they move. The moment they heat up, they open up like that. What you're really attempting to do is to kill them, okay? So, no blood, guaranteed, okay? I can take that female thing and I can show her how a man uses it, you know, uh, and uh, vice versa. She can take my male thing and show me how a female would use it. And that actually forms the whole picture for me. That, that is really what makes one piece of somebody. Um, yeah, well, I can't relate to that. <laughs> I can't relate to that. I think if, we, um, if we're honest with ourselves, I think it is a d divine commandment from the Lord that um, we should be the provider and we should be the strong one in the relationship and, and I think the, the wife should be there to support the, the male in that role. And we didn't create love but that's sort of the way it goes you know it, it's more of a, a man's world and you can't blame us for that mm -hmm. and I'm not going to blame you for that mm -hmm. but you know women like to to blame men for that and it's, it's not us <laughs> no that's just the way it is. Well, most of the violence in our country is committed by men. And again, it's, it's part of our legacy. It's the raw and brutal exercise of power over those that are more vulnerable. It's the difference between jail rules, really. You, when you jail rule and accommodate them being women, and, and they, you, you want to accept them to, uh, to exercise their being women, mm -hmm. that's what it is. I think their status, their power, their strength, and the way I would say a man treats a woman is very important. And have you found out that Hendrik has a lot of that? Yes. I think my husband is one of the, I see it in my son, they charm it. They can just know how to turn the switch which way they should turn it and when they should turn it. And everybody sort of weep at their feet. Yeah, well, you know, you, you hear that, that, that women write to, women would write to, to these, these serial killers, you know, in jail and, and, and propose to them. I've never heard about that. Yeah. And, I, and I've come across it sometimes, you know, when you're, you're sitting at a table and you're talking to somebody, and then, you, and then you'll, you'll go to sort of a darker side of yourself. And then you start seeing, they start becoming mesmerized, you know. And it's, and it's somewhere that they want to go. 
there's just something crazy, a bit of danger, you know. Foul. That's what you're working for, isn't it? But the main thing is, and I think this is, this is where Indra can agree or disagree, but I think it's the way you, you use the foul. And knowing him, it's not a guy that's using it the wrong way. You, you can get into a lot of trouble with the foul. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I try and not consider myself as a powerful man. Mm -hmm. Obviously in certain things, if you don't have power, you won't achieve anything. Mm -hmm. So I must say, the only person I got the hold of by power is my wife. My mother loves him. And like any woman, she sometimes, you know, you get jealous, but she respects his, um, his image that he has. And I think she likes it as well. You know, she's proud of the husband that's wanted sometimes. The successful people do have a sex, a sex appeal. It's like power, and money is power. And success in business is power. So it's it must be locked up in that. And uh, Hendrik? I'm talking about Hendrik. Oh, for sure. But <laughs> money, money gives you power. And in South Africa, um, sort of a, a high sporting sort of yeah. Profile also right. gives you a lot of power. This uh, jersey we have here, that's uh, the Woodburg Rugby Club at the time today, you know, the Centurion Rugby Club. Mm -hmm. I got involved with Centurion Rugby Club by sponsoring them. We sponsored Touch with a Stick, we sponsored a lot of musical things. Yes, I have I carry him with me like a diary. He's such a beauty. And then um, I had sort of a farewell game at Loftus, um, it's also on, uh, on Super Sport. And Hendrik uh, was the sponsor of the Nash Gota 15. Okay. And then in Namibia was the sponsor of the World 15. I got uh, 21 guys from overseas to come and play. With my relationship with Nas, I met Edward Griffith. He wrote Nas's book. And uh, when he finished his job with Nas's book, this is Enid. Enid. Hello. So when Nas's uh, book was finished, I asked Edward, what are you going to do now? He said, well, he's not too sure what he's going to do. He said, well, I think I've got a job for you. Please do your research and see where do I come from. I think in Hendrik's case, it's with um, everything that he's received in life. He feels a responsibility towards the com community. Three, seven, eight, eight, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Yeah, Hendrik's very sociable. And there's always a place for 10 more at the table. The visitor's book is a very nice book to have, but then you must remember to have it filled in <laughs> or to have a pen readily available. Unfortunately, when Mr. Mandela was here for dinner one night, uh, we didn't do that. Success seems to be appealing to women. Why is that? I think because success means money and it means wealth. And a lot of women is attracted to wealth and money. And a guy with a nice sports car or a nice, a nice car, it certainly is going to be attracting to a woman. Yes, but this is five times 100,000. Five times Six 100, times 100,000. <laughs> now, can okay. you try like this? Yes. Make me pick up a chick like that. No, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, yes, I think, uh, I think so, yeah. I think if you arrive somewhere with this car, it, it, it says a lot for you. Excuse me, ma'am. Is that I don't know. No, I don't know. Excuse me? Can you ask the lady right. a question? Next? Adrian, can I ask you one question, please? A guy like you, if I pitch and drove and come out of China like that, you'd marry me tomorrow. You'd marry me tomorrow. <laughs> Ooh, boy. A friend of Hendrik always says, when they talk on the phone, they always say they can only attract women these days by hanging, like, with all their gold cards hang out their pockets. Money is joy. Money is love. 
money is everything. If you don't have money, you can never move mountains. If you have money, you're definitely going to move mountains. Oh my God! <laughs> Ja, dat is mooi gebouwd. En dat is sterk. Dat is wat de mens zoekt. Ja, ja, ja. Ik zal het niet zien, ik weet het, want als baie geld wat ik moet kijken, hoor je algemeen. Kijk, hij is wel een verloofd en niet zo'n winnen een getrouwde man is. En hij slaapt bespreekt. Blom, I love you, man. <laughs> she knows, I, I can't use the other name, man. <laughs> Not so cheesy. Die mensen kijken maar, Fali. What's your word? Fali, vrouwelijke geslag. Allemaal kijken. Kijk eens, kijk. Yes! Now we're really spooky. Let anybody try this who's not prepared for it. They are going to endanger their lives. They're going to get hurt. That's it. This is not only stunts, it's spectacular. They are power athletes doing this stuff. <laughs> And we're allowed to cry these days, it's so lekker. Stop this! Right, we're ready to rumble. Remember, this is both on two thumbs. Let's go, 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 go. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an adrenaline rush. They reckon bungee jumping is good, paragliding is good. If you have a 4x4, 1,600 kilos right over it, and you know your adrenaline is rushing, you know it. And there's no other man in the world that does this, except me. What? Yeah! There is a predominant image which I think is militaristic. It's so dangerous. It's I am the power and I need to show you that I have the power. You're from Africa, man, and you, you know the African man is gonna be always like you know, above, he's got to be in control of the whole situation. But nowadays, it's not, a, it's not all about that. It's about, it's about understanding. It's about giving in. It's about, yeah. In fact, a lot of the strife and conflicts of the world are caused by men. You know, there's a very worthy saying that says that if there were more women in government, we'd have less war and more development. Men are losing their traditional position in society, and they're very, very threatened by that. I don't think it's a coincidence that that violence against women seems to be increasing. If she wants to, to kick a bag now and then, you've got to let her kick the bag, you know? You know? If she feels if she wants to be masculine sometimes and, and do what I'm, I'm doing now, then it's fine with that. My personal image of the ideal man is someone that would share the responsibility of bringing up children, of dealing with even the most basic domestic chores that have to be done. I think it's, it's for the mothers firstly to change their attitude to bringing up their sons. It's to teach them to respect women more, to do things for themselves. And actually there's nothing wrong with doing some housework and helping with the kids got nothing to do with masculinity. Whereas before, it would just be the old gentlemanly thing, you know, scratch your testicles and, and, and be butch and, and, and be a man and wear the shirt in the right place on the waist and, and Bob's your uncle. No, uh, but I can't wear the veil with red nails, okay? I'm far too butch for that. But these days, Bob's becoming your auntie. <laughs> That's quite funny. Uh, even if you're doubtful, you know, you go in there and you think, yes, sir, I'm not going to pull this off. But you just like take off all that fear and you walk into it and you can't. President Mandela. No. Um, and I would, I'm trying to think back at 
his days as a younger man. His cheeks are slightly full. No, not terribly sexy, but because he would have needed a bit of fixing, you know, for me. But um, also a very nice man. <laughs>